Excel has a hidden button that will help you automate any task and save hours with your work. It's called the Macro Recorder. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it along with ChatGPT to eliminate boring Excel tasks and work like a pro. So let's go. All right, so in this example, we have this order data that we get every week, and we need to follow this set of instructions to clean up the data to create a report that looks like this. And as you can see, this report has a title at the top, it has a date, there's a table with our data, and also some conditional formatting here for any quantity greater than six. Now, the problem with this type of cleanup work is that it can be time consuming, get boring, and cause you to make errors. So I'm going to explain how to do all of this cleanup work with just the click of a button. We're going to automate this entire process. And to start, we're going to use the macro recorder. So I'm going to go over here to the order data sheet with the raw data. And there is a secret hidden uh, tab within Excel called the developer tab. It's right here. If you don't see the developer tab, it's disabled by default. All you need to do is right click anywhere on the ribbon here and go to customize the ribbon. And then right here, your developer tab will likely be unchecked. You just need to check that and hit OK, and that will enable the developer tab. And the developer tab has these great buttons over here for macros. So we can write code to create macros that when we run those macros, it'll automatically do tasks for us in Excel. There's also a nice feature called record macro, where we can just record our actions. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to hit the record macro button. That'll bring up this window here. We want to give our macro a name. I'm going to call this uh, prepare. Oops, and you cannot have spaces, so I'm going to use an underscore. We'll just call it uh, manufacturing data, something like that. There we go. And we are going to store this in the personal macro workbook. So you have some options here. Just choose personal macro workbook, and I'll explain more about that later. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. You can now see that that button has turned into the stop recording button. And this lets us know that the macro is currently recording all of our actions. So the first thing I'm going to do is convert this data to an Excel table. Just select any cell here. We'll go to the insert tab and choose table. And this all looks good. So we'll just go ahead and hit OK. And that's created the Excel table. Now I want to insert a few rows at the top here for my title. So I can just select this first row. You can right click insert or you can hit control plus on the keyboard. I want three blank rows and I'll give this uh, title and cell A1. And then I also want to format this cell. I'm just going to change the font here to size 16 and make it bold. In this cell here, I want to have the word date just like that. And then in this cell, I want to have today's date. So for this, I'm just going to use the today function. We'll just tab into that and that'll return today's date. And since this is always going to update whenever we open the file, we really don't want that. So for now, what I'm going to do is replace this with values. I'm going to hit control C to copy here. And then you can uh, right click paste values or use the keyboard shortcut control shift V to just paste values there. So that will just insert today's date and leave it hard coded as today's date. Next, I want to sort the table by the product ID column. So all of my product IDs are grouped together. So I'm going to hit sort A to Z. And then finally, I want to apply some conditional formatting. So I'm just going to select the quantity column. On the home tab here, I'm going to go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and we'll say greater than. And in this box here, we're just going to type eight. So we'll get conditional formatting applied whenever the cell value is greater than eight. We can just leave it as this light red fill with dark red text and hit OK. And that's all the steps we need for now. So we'll go back to the developer tab and we can click the stop recording button. Before I do that, I just want to point out that the stop recording button is also located down here in the status bar. You can see it right here. So we can click it here or right up here in the developer tab. And now we can go look at the code. So we're going to hit the visual basic button. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F11. That's going to open up the VB editor. And we recorded this macro in the personal macro workbook. So you should see a personal.xlsb file here on the left side in the project window. And I have a lot of macros and code modules in here uh, because I use this frequently. But you might not have this many, but you will see module one or a module with a number after it. You can double click on that. And here's the macro that we just recorded. So our prepare manufacturing data macro. And here is all the code that was generated when we took those steps in Excel. So next we're gonna test this out and run this code. So we can jump back over to Excel. 
And I have a few other files here. Here's the orders for week two. So I'm just going to open this file. It has the raw data right here. To run the macro, we can go back to the developer tab and we're going to click the macros button. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F8. That's going to open up this window. And you'll see that we have all of the macros here. This is macros in all open workbooks. You can just filter this down for the personal macro workbook. Now, again, I have a lot of them, so I'm going to need to go find that macro, which is uh, right here, prepare manufacturing data. So I'm going to select that one, and then we'll go ahead and click run. So that's going to run the macro, and you can see it instantly does all that work for us to insert the table, add the titles up here, do the sorting, and the conditional formatting. And that's amazing. We've automated this entire process. However, we do have a problem here. If you scroll down, you'll notice that the table ends right here. And that's because the original uh, table, the original raw data only had those 67 rows. This new data has a lot more rows, but the table has not been extended down to include all these additional rows at the bottom. And this can be an issue with macros that are created from the macro recorder. So if we jump back into the VB editor and we start looking at some of this code here, there are a lot of hard-coded references. And what I mean by hard-coded references is you can see right here in the code that when we create the table, so the list object is the table in VBA, it's doing that with this range here, only going down those 64 rows. For our new data, we need a lot more rows than that. We have over 100 rows. So we would need to change this reference in order to include those new rows. As we scroll down through this, we can also see that sometimes the sheet name is referenced here. That could also cause problems if we run this code on a sheet that's not named order data. That's going to raise errors here in our code. So the macro recorder, although it's a fantastic tool, it does create those hard-coded references that can cause problems with our macros. So in order to fix all these issues and make this code more dynamic, we're going to employ the help of AI. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select all the code here. You can select all the code, the entire macro, from the subline to the end subline. I'm going to hit Control C on the keyboard. And then what I did is I used ChatGPT. You can use any LLM, Copilot, ChatGPT, Claude, really doesn't matter here. And what I did was I gave it this first prompt and I used my ODA prompting framework. I have a separate video that covers that in more detail. I'll link that up in the description below. But typically with any prompts, I give it a quick overview. So I got the following code from the macro recorder in Excel and I need your help making it more dynamic. And then I give it the uh, code down here and I also asked it a question. So the A in ODA stands for ask questions. And I always like to do this. Do you have any questions on this task? And so ChatGPT came back and it did have a few questions, just clarifying questions on uh, the macro itself, including using the used range for the table, uh, renaming the table, inserting the header rows, and so on. And so then, and I think I accidentally hit enter here because it assumed my answers were yes, but down here I did give it answers to those questions. And then it came back with a, fina a final dynamic version of the macro. And here is the updated macro. So the macro here is much more dynamic. It uses variables, which we can see at the top. These dim statements are variables that make the code more dynamic and we don't have hard coded values. So you can just copy this code here, click the copy button. I'll jump back over to Excel and then right down here at the bottom, you can just hit enter and paste in the new macro. Now, for any reason, the macro has the same name as the one you pasted in. It might. You just need to change that. So it's a different name. You could put GPT or something at the end. So you remember the source of this macro here. And then we can jump back into Excel and test it out. So I'll jump back into Excel here. I'm actually going to go over and uh, open this orders week three file because it has some raw data in it. Again, developer tab, uh, macros, and we'll go find that new macro. Here it is right here, and we'll go ahead and click run. And so that runs the macro. Now, of course, it does all those same steps, and we just want to test out to make sure that it also is including the new data at the bottom, and you can see those additional rows are included. So we now have fully automated this process with just the click of a button. At the beginning, when we recorded the macro, we did that in the personal macro workbook. As you can see here, we have this personal macro workbook. Now, the personal macro workbook opens every time you open Excel. It opens up along with Excel. 
So any macros that you have stored in your personal macro workbook will always be available to run on any open file. So therefore you don't have to store these macros in your Excel files. You can just run the macros on any open file and it makes it really convenient. You can also add buttons up to the ribbon here. So I have this custom My Macros tab with these different buttons that will run macros in my personal macro workbook, again, on any file that I have open. I have a separate video series that covers this setup in more detail, and I'll link that up in the description below. So I really like this combination of using the macro recorder to initially record a macro with all of your data in Excel, and then using AI to clean it up and make it more dynamic. Pasting this macro in from the macro recorder gives ChatGPT a lot of context here so you don't have to type a lot of instructions into ChatGPT with cell references and all those types of things. It really gives a lot of context here and ChatGPT typically does a great job of cleaning the code up to give you a more dynamic solution that you can then use on other files. It's by no means perfect, and I definitely recommend that you have knowledge of VBA and how to write code in VBA, but these AI tools will save you a ton of time when creating macros. Now, we also have online training courses on macros in VBA to help you go from beginner to pro. I'll put a link to those in the description, but I'm curious to know what task you'll be automating in Excel. Leave a comment below and let us know. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you want to learn other ways to use macros in your work, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.